Hey there! To be or not to be? Not to be, because it is an extra fine. You get it? Yeah, alright, good. Uh, today we're going to have a look at the Shakespeare. It's one of the uh, uh, Mont Blanc Writer's Edition pens. It was kindly lent to me by Applebaum Pennon. And I think this is a, definitely an interesting pen. So I'm going to, going to cover the parts of the pen, I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then I'll do a writing sample. This is the box, there's a protective white outer box, but that's just white, so I'm not going to show you that. And the nice thing about the Writer's Edition pens, if you've, if you've never seen one, is that they come in boxes that are shaped like a book, you know, right? Writer's Edition, etc. So you actually open it like a book. Uh, there is a, a fairly extensive uh, booklet uh, in there, various languages, uh, which actually I think looks quite nice, full colour and all that. Um, I, I really uh, like it. I think it's 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 nicely done. Um, there's also a lot of explanation in there on on all the the symbolism in the pen. I'll, I'll come to that in a second. Even a service guide, which in itself is a whole manual, but of course that's also because it's in a number of languages. But should you have no idea how to fill a piston filler, because it's your first one, for example, and it's useful they supply all of that. Um, then there is the, the actual uh, pen box. You can take out a little a cushion, and the pen would sit there suspended in time in its little plastic wrapper, or not, of course. Okay, I'm going to put that back together, close that book. I'm having issues, I'm just going to leave it there. And here we have the pen. Writer's editions are always limited, relatively limited. Uh, there are 8,700 of these pens, so you could debate how, how limited that is really. Um, but, they are limited. There's the pen and there's a lot going on on this pen. Montblanc always puts in and on as much symbolism as they can, it seems. And, in a way, that's very nice. So, there is a lot of detail on this pen. Uh, I'm going to try to reproduce all of the bits uh, that I read about. Okay, so here we have the pen. You can see it's a faceted cap. And right on top there, uh, that is a, uh, a top view of the Globe Theatre in London. Um, so you have the sort of the, the, the seating arrangement and the center of that is of course the, uh, the, the Mont Blanc white star. Uh, then there is the clip. At the end of the clip is this ring, supposed to represent Shakespeare's earring, uh, which I, I found very, uh, very fascinating detail. If you ever have uh, bad feelings about your handwriting, uh, here on the uh, cap is uh, William Shakespeare's autograph. Um, yeah. Okay, then we have the barrel. You can see, I hope, that it has this sort of guilloche uh, little... Um, what, what, do you call, what shall we call that? Lines in there. Uh, that's supposed to represent the quill that uh, Shakespeare used to write his plays. So I'm assuming that this is the... Uh, what do you call it again? Fletching? The little hairs on the, um, the, the, the quill uh, that is used to write with. Of course, those hairs were removed in a quill when you wrote with it. Contrary to what you see in movies and on paintings, etc. So I don't know if that really makes a lot of sense. But I suppose it, the feathers have the little hairs on them, so maybe that before they get prepared to write with. Anyway, just uh, nerding out there. Uh, then we have a, a gold ring there. And on that gold ring are various little symbols. And those symbols uh, refer to the, uh, the big plays Shakespeare wrote. So we have a little sort of storm cloud, cloudy, swirly thing for the Tempest. We have a sea with laurels for Julius Caesar. We have a rose and dagger for Romeo and Juliet. There's a little skull for Hamlet. There is chess pieces for, um, I thought that was uh, King Lear. And then there is a crest for Henry V and the crown for Macbeth. So a lot of, a lot of the, 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 the different plays are symbolized there. And then we have this nice tapered end. It is a piston filler, so you can uh, use that for, um, to, to rotate, to, to operate the piston. Then finally, there is of course in this pen black and white. That refers to the uh, flags that were, were waving uh, over the theater. 
to symbolize what type of play there was. There was either uh, tragedies or there were comedies for black and white flags, so you, you would know what you would be going in for. Cap unscrews. Uh, on there is uh, uh, the Globe Theatre again on the nib. Uh, I don't know how well you can see that, but it's, it's an etching of that theatre. Uh, of course, there is some other stuff on there. Uh, 4810 for the height of the Mont Blanc, it says Mont Blanc. It says 18 carat uh, and it says AU750 and it has the year on there. So, again, quite a lot of detail, even on just the nib. Section, simple, tapers down, nice gold ring there, and that's pretty much all there's to it. In hand, not a, a super small pen. It's, uh, it, it's nicely tapered down, but I would not call that small. Should you uh, want to do that, uh, this is not really a postable pen, so this doesn't really work for the people who like to post. And I find it fairly heavy. Uh, there's quite a bit of metal on this and you, you feel that. That's that. Um, all goes back together. Clip is pretty stiff, but does work well. And there you have it. So, what do I think of this pen? Well, I think it has a couple of, of very neat features. First of all, I would say there is a lot, a lot going on in this pen when it comes to all the symbolism, all the references to Shakespeare, to Shakespeare's work, to his, even to his, his bloody earring. I mean, they, they really put in a lot, a lot of detail like that. I think that's very interesting. I think it's very interesting that, that Mont Blanc has really tried to incorporate as, as much symbolism as they could. Um, because that, you know, if this would pretty much be a black and white 149, then that's it, and there's nothing else going on. So I appreciate that. I, I do like it. I, um, I, I like the nib, even though it had a few uh, skipping issues. It is an extra fine. It's a very interesting grind. It's, it's very slightly architect-ish. Uh, so it, it seems to have a very narrow downstroke and a broader side stroke, so kind of the opposite of an italic nib. That's interesting. Um, anything I don't like about it? Well, there's a few things. First of all, it is a piston filler, and it has no ink window, unlike the, uh, the 146, 149, etc. Is that a, a giant problem? Not necessarily, but you have no idea of knowing how much ink is in there. It's also absolutely not translucent, uh, so you, you really have no way of, of telling. Um, a problem? I don't know. Could be. Uh, if you're on the road a lot, then that, that can definitely be an issue. Uh, a second issue I had, uh, and that's that's pretty much all, really, because I think it is a, through the hole, it's, it's a well-made pen. Uh, but something that, that concerns me a little bit is that it's, uh, of course, it's, it's resin and the threads on the inside of the cap are also resin uh, whereas these threads on the barrel are actually metal and that always makes me a little worried because metal can definitely grind down resin and if some point these threads lose their purchase you can pretty much throw this out because it's hard to restore that, you have to send back to Mont Blanc, they would undoubtedly charge you for a new cap, uh, so it makes me a little weary. Is it really going to be a problem? Time will tell, but if you are if you're just a collector and you put this in your cupboard on display in the nice box, it shouldn't be an issue, but if you're a real user, um, that could be a problem. Okay, price, 910 euros, that's uh, uh, not exactly cheap. On the other hand, given that it's a special edition Mont Blanc, I wasn't that shocked. Uh, I, I, in fact, I, I found it. Is there is any pen ever priced reasonably? Uh, is an interesting debate, but I kind of see it in this one. Would I necessarily buy this? Probably not. That's mainly because of the shape. That does not appeal to me so much personally. But I do think the quality is there, and there is some really nice details. So if you are a big fan of Shakespeare. I can see why you, you would want to have this. Available, a lot of spots. Of course, I got this one from Applebaum. Don't forget that if you go to my website and click the Applebaum banner, you're taken to a special page where you get a 10% discount. Um, and um, uh, that's... Uh, oh, uh, of course, but I forget. 
even though that's nice, it doesn't apply to Mont Blanc. Sorry. Um, so, <laughs> interesting all the same. The one thing that is interesting, especially for my friends uh, overseas, is that if you are not in the EU, of course you can always buy this in Europe and not have to pay a value-added tax. So, in that regard, it can still be interesting for you to try and obtain one in Europe. And that's all there's to it. So, I hope this was useful. Uh, thank you to Yoast for uh, lending me this pen. I appreciate it. Let's see how it writes. As always, measurements and high-resolution pictures will be on the website, sbrebrown.com. Hope this was useful so far, and I'm glad to see you later. Bye-bye. Okay, so there we go with the Mont Blanc William Shakespeare Writer's Edition, etc. The nib is extra fine and the ink is Mont Blanc Corn Poppy Red. This was not a skip, that was, I, I misaligned the nib. Lazy dog. Bit of fast writing. I think they did fairly well too. It seems to be a pretty uh, consistent nib. Wetness, well it isn't extra fine, so it is on the drier side. Um, line variation. Now here I think this is where things get interesting. Because this really is kind of like an architect grind. You see that the, the side strokes are wider than the down strokes. I don't know if this is the case for all of these nibs, but in this particular extra fine, that's what it looks like. Line variation by pressure. As you can see, you can squeeze out a bit. but. Oh, that's really weird. Uh, e, sorry. I, it is a pretty rigid nib, so there's not a lot of line variation. If you want to do reverse writing in an extra fine, I don't think that makes that much sense, but then you go to, I guess, extra, extra fine. Uh, it's also, it, it gets very dry, so it doesn't really work that well. Okay, so there you have it. Thank you, Yoast, for lending me this pen. I appreciate it. I hope this was useful so far, and um, I'll gladly see you later. Bye bye! Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's lees have all too short a date. Uh, sometime too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often is his gold complexion dimmed, and every fair from fair some time declines, by chance, all nature's changing cause untrimmed. But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou owest, nor shall death brag thou wanderest in his shade when in eternal lines to time thou growest. So long as men can breathe and eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to thee. If you're a bird with big jubblies, I'll definitely be willing to read you poetry all night. I'm ten inches. I'm Lord Windermere. Bye. Email me.